Trevante, the film Moonlight has proven to be a really big hit in art house theaters. Uh, it's expanding now. Why do you think this film has had such an impact on people? I think the film is is impacting so many people in, in such a way because it is something that's so specific that it becomes this universal thing that we all can relate to. You know, it touches on so many topics, whether it be identity, love, sexual orientation, um, 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 coming to terms with your sexual orientation, all these things. Like we all at some point go through some semblance of that in our lives. So it's just speaking to everybody, you know? Right. I mean, I think that's what's so extraordinary about the movie is that on the one hand, it is a very specific kind mm -hmm. of examination. But on the other hand, it's a very universal story. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and also it's very uniquely structured. I mean, you are the lead character in the film, but you are also one of three actors who yeah. plays the lead character in the movie. Talk a little bit about that. I explain uh, the structure of it. Right. You know, so that is just the most unique this thing in itself and 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 reading the script you you see that it's depicted this way and you see that it's kind of just like three short films in a sense kind of encapsulating this whole thing and just watching it for the first time when i saw it it was just like this reincarnation of myself because i would see little alex who looks exactly like i looked when i was younger barring like some change in the nose maybe but he literally looked as it like how I did. And then in the second segment with Ashton, I had that stage when I was kind of a taller, skinny, gangly kind of guy. So it was just the most unique thing. But I think it was just the most brilliant thing Barry could do for this particular story by showing that throughout our lives, we do change so drastically depending on what happens to us. And this person, Sharon, is someone who had obviously these incredible moments happen to him throughout his life that really depicted the change throughout his life. So it was it was it was unique, but it was just it was really cool, man. And then the fact that Bray kind of didn't let Andre or, or I like look at anything the younger versions were doing. Like I, I wanted to see the way Alex walked or the way that he held his fork when he ate. You know what I mean? Or the way he carried his head whenever he was listening to someone. I wanted to get some semblance of that because some of the things we do as adults we did when we were younger. It's just certain things that are instilled in us. But Barry was really adamant about not allowing us to do that because he didn't want us to mimic. But I think the script was just so vibrant and the spacing and, and the beats, you just knew who this person was. You had you had to internalize who this person was. So that was, I don't know, but yeah, it was a unique thing. It was unique. That's interesting. I was actually gonna ask how you, uh, you built upon what the other two actors had done, but uh, yeah. if that was a challenge, uh, I guess it might've even been more challenging to uh, mm. not know how they built upon it. Um, so let's talk about how you got the part, because this is a big breakout role for you. I mean, you've been in some films and TV before. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I've caught you in the pilot of Westworld. I was like, oh, that's the guy from, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the guy yeah. from Moonlight. Um, yeah. But this is like your big uh, breakout role. Absolutely. So talk about the audition and getting the part. So uh, I remember, I just remember specifically, I was literally in the gym that day, and I got a call from my manager. And she said, literally, dude, stop whatever you're doing. This is the best script I'd ever read in my life. You need to, I know you're in the gym right now, but go <laughs> home and read this script. And I did, and it was legitimately the best thing that I ever read. So, and initially I went in for the role of Kevin, but if you ask Barry, he'll tell you that subconsciously I was reading for Chiron. Either that or I would have just made the most terrible Kevin ever, because for whatever reason, I gravitated towards Chiron the first time I read it. I read the thing start to finish nonstop twice that day, which, for me is incredible because I like I read a script, I stop at like page 30 and I go eat some pizza or you know, whatever it may be. So the fact that I got through it and the fact that again it was just such a great read. You saw the blood, sweat, and tears that Barry put into this script. So it was just this is the most amazing thing. And so I go in, read for the role of Kevin, and not even five seconds into the audition, Barry stops me and was like, bruh, bro, I'm gonna do you a favor. I want you to come back tomorrow and read for the other role. And I did, and two auditions later, I booked the role. So tell us a little bit about who Chiron is, and in particular, who he is when you become him. Yeah, so Chiron is, is I love Chiron. He's, he's the most beautifully flawed individual, and he's just someone who is, at the early stage, I guess, someone who is not comfortable with himself. He, he doesn't love himself because he doesn't have that love and that, 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 um, 
that understanding from his mother. And if you don't have that from the one person who is supposed to love you, you can't find that within yourself. Um, he's someone who, I don't know, he, 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 he shield, obviously he shields himself from the world because he's afraid that the world will judge him. He's afraid that the world will, will judge his truest version. That he knows that people will judge him with the exterior that he has, but that's okay because that's not who he really is. You know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just yeah. So 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 finding Sharon and like embodying that person was really unique to me because I you know I find myself to be someone who is like you know I like to talk, I like to connect with people, I like you know I do all these things. Like I'm always smiling, and Sharon mm -hmm. is someone who is just so distant from that person he he is someone i i walked so in finding him i walked around la really just feeling this disdain towards everyone that i came into contact with i like there were moments where i felt as if i were to connect to someone they would see through this mask that i had they would see the insecurities they would see that i was really just this kid who wanted to you know just dance and be flamboyant and all these things and so it, w it was really just about building this shell and walking with that the weight of that like just 30 pound 35 pound weight on my chest and and not literally being able to 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 express love towards anyone like i would see little kids walking around with their family just happy and i would hate them i would literally want to just kick them because i couldn't find the happiness within myself you know what i mean and it was just the most unique sensation because i don't know like you 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 feel like I said, the weight of this person, you feel it's suffocating in a sense. And to like I was doing this for, for hours of the day, but to have to, to be in a skin that this person does this throughout the existence of their life, like that is just it's the most unique sensation to me. And I don't know, it was just yeah, it was just really unique to to to, to kind of live in that skin. It, it really made me appreciate um how open I am with with my my real life, you know and how I receive people and like, I'm, I'm really just appreciative to have that experience. But, but yeah, anyways, yeah, sorry. I rant, man, I go, I go on and on about certain things. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's interesting to watch his development throughout the film and yeah. who he becomes when, when you take it over. And in particular, I thought it was interesting and you don't have any scenes with this man at all, but the effect that Mahershala Ali's character yeah. has on you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So. I think in regards to just how just like literally I'm mirroring or Sharon is mirror, mirroring this person because in our lives we we kind of reach for whatever we think success is and I mean though his job was a bit unsavory mm -hmm. Juan was the only positive influence that this kid had in his life so it was only natural for him to, again, regardless of the job, to gravitate and to try and assume the role of what he saw as being successful. You know what I mean? And then, and again, this person was a drug dealer, but he was the only person that showed him love. And, you know, you're not, just because he was a drug dealer, that wasn't who he was, you know what I mean? That was just a, a part of who he was, what he did rather. And yeah, you could have, tried to embody the the person for who they are as opposed to what they did. But again, that was the only positive thing he saw. And again, like not, like not having the father figure at all, not having your mother really accept you and to have that one person literally in the world, it was just what you like, again, it's just what he had to do. It was the only way to fill that void, to fill that void of, 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 of longing for something, you know? And so, yeah, man, like, it was unique to like see this this kid watch this man with you know the gold teeth and then the do rag and the crown on the dashboard of the car, and then get to kind of see him assume the same thing. So yeah, did I answer the question? No, you did. <laughs> I was gonna say also. I mean, he's also the person who says it's okay to be who you are. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like and then yeah, in that moment, that's like that's all you want. You know, what I mean, especially when you're kind of grappling with what life is or, or who am I and you know to have someone just to validate that and to tell you whoever you are I will love you and I accept you for that mm -hmm. you know what I mean that's everything right 
Now, you in the film, uh, you you personally uh, have two scenes uh, that are really uh, they're pivotal relations throughout the film. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're meeting these people at different stages of their life. Um, Naomi Harris, uh, as your mother, can you talk a little bit right. about her and working with her? Yeah. So, a funny like the funny story. I met Naomi for the first time whenever. Uh, probably like an hour or two or two hours before going to set we were on the elevator I walk onto the elevator and she's just you know going I know who she is obviously she has no idea who I am she's like oh so you're going to set and she's like oh are you with production I'm like I'm, 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 I'm like well I'm your son and she's like oh and then we have this beautiful moment and then literally I get off to go to the gym and then she you know goes to set and then we meet again I guess 10 minutes prior to shooting the scene and it's just it's just funny, but then we jump right into the space, and it was. I coined that moment specifically that scene as the moment when I fell in love with acting because it was just the most surreal thing to like, the fact that we had such a short schedule, you didn't really have the time to kind of ex like, take off the skin, you know what I mean, and exhaust yourself of this person. So I was living in this space and in the mindset of this person throughout the duration of the thing. So we really just jumped into it right away. And I felt every emotion that this person would have, like I'm like shaking right now, man, because like I have a wonderful relationship with my mother. Mm -hmm. So it was really enticing to me to kind of assume someone and to embody a skin of someone who has the exact opposite of that. Again, to kind of like appreciate my situation even more. But in these moments, like in the scene, the first take we did, it was just so powerful to me. Like she's looking at my, like she's looking in my eyes and Naomi is an incredible, obviously an incredible actress, looking in my eyes and I felt everything. I felt the honesty. I felt her genuinely telling me that she loved me. Mm -hmm. For the first time in my life, like, literally for the first time in this person's life and actually meaning it as opposed to just trying to get five bucks so she can get her next fix. So in the, the first take, you know what I mean? The first take you, you, you just, and we're getting her footage and I'll never forget, like we're getting her footage, but like, I just, I just start bawling and I start pouring down and, and, and she, after Bay calls cut, Bay walks up and he's like, bruh, save it, bruh. Like we're getting her footage. Don't even just save it. I'm like, you don't understand, man. This is real life. This is this experience is like I have it every time, bro. Don't even worry. And Naomi just looks at me. Words are not said. She just looks at me, reaches on the table and puts her hand on my knee. And that to me, that was just like a moment where it was just like, I'm here. Like she like, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it other than just to be like, that was me like stepping in and assuming what I kind of want to, I don't know where I want to be you know what I mean like that was her kind of like bringing me into this the fact that it's not just acting anymore it's 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 artistry I think and I, I don't know I just it's weird to say but like I just I don't know it was just a wonderful moment and I love her for it and then we just continued to do it every take every take we would just start bawling and it was it got to the point where it was like a headache because you're reliving this moment this incredible moment but just over and over and over again and it's really affecting you but I mean, we only did like six or seven takes, but, but yeah, man, I don't know. And, 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 and then just kind of like being done with that moment, I felt so happy as a person to, I don't know, again, like I said, I have a wonderful relationship with my mother, but I felt like going to a place where I didn't have that and then kind of living in the development of that kind of just amplified that moment that, that that sensation that i have with my mother to the nth degree you know what i mean right yeah so yeah that was just an incredible moment yeah amazing to think she filmed all her stuff in a weekend i think it was three days three days yeah. that is my <laughs> she was literally three different people in three days you know yeah. Uh, yeah amazing to think uh tour de force of acting certainly um and then of course the other pivotal relationship in the film is between you and andre holland yeah. Um, talk a little bit about uh, working together. I mean, there's that beautiful scene. Uh, really, the last act of the movie is just the two of you talking, and there's that great yeah. scene in the diner, and it just plays out very long but very engaging. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think 
well, in, in developing the relationship with Andre in itself, because uh, it was another situ it was the same situation in the sense like the first time I ever heard Andre Holland's voice ever was when we made the phone call. And initially, I thought that we were going to have the, um, the 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 first AD or someone make like read the sides or whatever while we were doing the thing, but literally ten minutes before, Ray comes up to me on the day we're going to have Andre make the call, and that was just incredible to me because one, it's the first time that Black the character is hearing this person's voice ever because I mean you know last time he spoke to the kid he was he was a kid so your voice changed everything changes, so it was a real genuine. Like, who is this person? I recognize the name, but I don't know the voice. And then, oh, okay, this is emotions, emotions, emote, you know, all these things. And then the fact that Andre Holland made that call whenever he didn't need to, he was literally out on the beach, you know, like he came out early to just enjoy Miami. He didn't need to make that call. So that showed me his heart as an individual, you know, and that kind of really set the tone for me to like in my mind or in, in black's mind developing that relationship as this person being someone who is a beautiful person this person being someone that i can look to and and kind of try and assume this role that they are like to to kind of be who they are in a sense because like in real life andre holland is you know he's a classically trained actor he's been doing it for a while he's great at it he's incredible and like these are things that i look to and you know, I, I want to get to in my career, you know, and I feel like that's synonymous with the way or the relationship that that, that Sharon and Kevin have, because Sharon sees Kevin as this person who is secure with himself. He has come to terms with who he is. He is li like he's living in his truest life. He's not it's not some glamorous life, obviously, but he's happy because he is living in his truest self. And Sharon sees that and he wants to assume that and he, he he yearns for that and so he makes this trip you know and so yeah it was it was really just kind of taking the same emotions that i feel and then the same love that i have because i love andre holland the mm -hmm. same love that i have for him although the context may be a bit different obviously but translating that to the film and every moment was just uh, you know just kind of a, 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 a the same thing in real life because I guess the the moment in the diner where he goes and, and sees this person that he hasn't seen in forever, he's also an, another person. And that was really the first moment I spent an extended period of time with Andre Holland. So it was like really just living this moment and growing with this person in this space, you know? Mm -hmm. And the last moments are so devastating too. I mean, when you're not to give anything away, uh -huh. but uh, it, it's just, it's, <clears throat> It's uplifting, but it's also devastating in a way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. I, 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 I want to, I guess I can't get too, too, I guess, specific, but like in the kitchen, you know what I mean? Yeah. There, there's this struggle and some people get it, some people don't, but there's this struggle that Sharon has within himself, like his mind and his heart want him to fully go in and be with this person but his body is physically rejecting it so he's like literally that if you pay attention like like he's shaking because there's this internal struggle and it's just the most unique thing because i've had that before you know like when like you like your heart and your mind are telling you to do something but your body is resisting and then once your mind takes over your heart takes over and you listen to your heart then you're just happy and it's just like you know what i mean so it's just yeah. like seeing that moment oh it's one of my favorite parts in the movie i don't i don't know i don't know <laughs> uh, it's just pretentious to say man I, I hate like but barry jenkins is an incredible filmmaker and i love incredible films and so I, especially since i'm in the third act by the time it gets to me I, I forget that i'm even in it so i'm already invested so this is just the best kind of thing but yeah so anyways it is an incredible film. Uh, lastly, I just want to ask if you could talk a little bit more about what uh, Barry Jenkins gave you as a director. I mean, it's amazing to think this is his second feature film because it is so accomplished. Um, what did he give you that really helped? Freedom. The fact that the day after I booked it, I called him to talk about characteristics and, and things that I saw and things that weren't even in the script, like 
if you pay attention, like I have a scar on the back of my head that I have my barber carb in because for whatever reason, when I read the script, I saw the, this one moment where Naomi Harris's character threw a bottle at the back of Sharon's head because he wouldn't give her $5. And now he has a scar. It's not in the script, but you see things. And so I wanted to talk to Barry about certain things, but before I could finish, he says, stop, bro, nah, he's yours. I wrote him, I fabricated him, I'm washing my hands of him. Whatever you see, bring that to life and, and we'll navigate through that on the set. And it was really just about, he just trusted me, you know? And, and at that stage in my career, at this stage in my career to have that much trust, and you know, I've been acting three years maybe, you know what I mean? And to have someone trust me and, and, and to have that much faith in, in my vision and have that much faith in the fact that our visions are the same and we can come to some common ground, that was everything to me. And then the fact that he's just the most, I don't know, sympathetic person, you know, and he, 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 he's intellectual. I'm, I'm incredibly inquisitive. I need to touch everything. I need to know what everything does. I need to, like, I ask so many questions. And he was someone who was so smart, so intellectual that he had an answer to everything. So for me, it was just, again, the most incredible, most, like I'm spoiled to have had that wonderful moment spent with this person and you know the cast and crew and everybody else involved, you know? Absolutely. Well, it's a great movie and congratulations on it. And thank, thank you for your you time. So much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too, brother. Thank you.